Would you like to hear sound of Stephen A. Smith breaking the news that Magic Johnson has accepted the job? Yeah, I would like to, of course. That goes without saying. I heard this live. It is glorious. Okay, well, hold on a second. Let me guess here, though. I don't have any idea what this sound is. Uh, is he really happy about it, or is he mystified by it? He must be really happy, right? Oh! So he's excited. So that's a good thing. Live from ESPN Studios in South Beach. It's the Dan Leverpart Show with the Stugats. Levitard show with Stu Gotts on ESPN Radio. Sarah Spain, uh, Amin El Hassan taking over today. And we've done, I'm going to say, zero minutes of show prep. Uh, I think uh, we have no idea what we're going to talk about. Uh, we have zero plans whatsoever. I don't think we have any guests scheduled. Uh, so awesome. Good Friday. Post NBA championship show. The kind of show that you expect from ESPN, the worldwide leader. Uh, when someone's just won their first ever championship, the kind of celebration that Canada deserves, zero prep whatsoever. Uh, Amin, I want to ask you my first uh, deep thought of the day in terms of uh, the NBA Finals. Have two teams ever been worse off post-NBA Finals run than the t- these two teams? Because it's probable that Masai Ujiri leaves. Kawhi Leonard's probably leaving. All of the Warriors are out next year. <laughs> And, and everything's in shambles, and these are the two best teams in the league. Um, uh, you know, it's, I don't know if they're going to be out for the whole year. You know, I think it's a little too early to say that. You've got guys, Rudy Gay came back in nine months from his uh, torn Achilles, and ACLs are generally six to nine months. So I can see both those guys being back nice. uh, past All-Star break, that, even though Kevin Durant will probably be in a different jersey. Uh, but, you know, it is, it is, there was kind of a finality, right? Like just the, oh, man, this was the end of everything for everybody, for a Golden State dynasty that lasted five years and for a Toronto dynasty that lasted a few months, right? <laughs> it, 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 was, it was fun while it lasted, but, but Sarah, it's worth it, right? Like if you're a Toronto fan, you'll trade 100 years of Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan almost getting there for that one year when you got it. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't think anybody up in Toronto is saying it's not worth it to have this rental time. But what a what a brief celebratory stretch they're going to get here. Now, they're going to celebrate this like everybody else will, but hanging over them is the idea. And I think it feels like, based on the people I've spoken to that are Raptors fans, that they're, they've already resigned themselves to, to Kawhi leaving. That if he leaves, they won't be mad at him. They won't be sad. It's what they expected. And they got literally as much as you can out of a player in one year than is possible, right? That's literally the best you can do on a one-year rental with a superstar like him. So they've kind of accepted it. But if the guy who put this all together leaves too, right? Like, you don't have to lose Masai Ujiri, but it certainly sounds like the Wizards are going to put together a compelling offer for him, and they could be left with the the guys that couldn't really get it done and Nick Nurse, who did get it done, and then a, a lot of question marks about who's coming in to take over a team that seemed like they just finally figured it out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think what that was last night was the the value of don't give up, don't let go of the rope too soon, right? There are a lot of teams. Think about the Houston Rockets, how close they got to beating the Warriors uh, in the last couple of years, and because it didn't happen, like ah, to hell with it, get everybody out of here, you know? Hey, we're gonna trade everybody. You know, the, the the sad part of it, man. If you just hang around long enough, sometimes. Sometimes you get picked. Sometimes it's your turn to, to celebrate in the sun. As far as Masai goes, 
I mean, it's not like the Raptors are owned by a mom and pop operation. Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment has deep pockets. If they, whatever compelling package the Wizards can offer, MLSC can match that. Uh, and I have to assume they would, given that the Raptors are the successful franchise in the, in the operation, right? Like the Maple Leafs aren't really ringing bells like they used to. And so, you know, this city is, has kind of uh, embraced Toronto, uh, excuse me, the Raptors as this is Toronto's number one team. And I was talking about it on the radio in Canada the other day where I said, is it like what happened in Miami where the Dolphins were the team, the Dolphins were the team, the Dolphins were the team, and then you're just inept for long enough for someone else to walk through that door, and, and now Miami is a basketball town. It's a basketball city. Is that going to happen in Toronto? They're like, it's already happening because most of the people who are Maple Leafs fans who are holding on to that Maple Leaf thing, they're all old. It's kind of like baseball for us in this country. It's all got people in their 50s and 60s. Yeah, they'd be back, though, if the Maple Leafs were good. <laughs> They're just yeah. not getting what they sure. want. Yeah, I mean, th- this but the is Raptors not a, are good, though. It, yeah, it's not not a hockey town anymore. It's just that it's more fun to win. So whatever team is winning is probably going to be a little more interesting. Uh, I mean, you're 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 perhaps a little bit more optimistic than I am about the Raptors. You're definitely more optimistic than I am about the Warriors. Listen, you're right. It's possible that Clay Thompson could resign with the team and be back around February or March. It's probable that KD isn't even on the team anymore, and even if he is, he's not going to be around almost certainly for all of next season. So you've got Clay looking like Will Smith at the end of Fresh Prince, looking around like, uh, what happened here? You don't have, I mean, Draymond can give you big speeches at the end and tell everybody they are going to doubt us and we still got this. I just, it feels like such a definitive finish to this run. And they have pieces to build on and they can go out and get somebody in KD's stead when he leaves, but... I've just never seen a team be that close to winning it all and then immediately be full of so many questions. Disastrous. Really? Miss Chicago? You know, you never seen a team do that? 1998 Chicago Bulls ring a bell? Well, they won a championship and then like a summer later, they're the worst team in the NBA. Okay, but that's that's the greatest player of all time retiring. It wasn't just him. Slash. It, it wasn't just him. It wasn't just him retiring. They got rid of Phil Jackson. They'd sign and trade to Scottie Pippen, Steve Kerr, Jeb Bush. Literally anyone who was there, you're right. out the door. Mass and next thing you know, you got Dragon Tarlock and uh, Cornell <laughs> David. And that's your Chicago Bulls now. It's a fair point. I guess maybe it just felt like this was not, this was felt, felt, felt very premature. It felt like not only did we, like, do you still consider the Warriors anywhere close to a favorite next year? Vegas has already said they're going to be the favorite. That was before um, and, Clay's ACL. No, no, no. That was after the game. After really? the game, the odds came out. Yeah. That's crazy so, to me. Do you guys uh, think my, my that? Th- you guys think the Warriors are still – you think when you go into the West, especially there's so many questions, right, because it could be KD and AD – I mean, uh, LeBron and AD with the with the Lakers. We never know who's going to the Clippers. But, like, I'm already looking before we even know how the West lays out and thinking that the Warriors have a massive uphill climb. That, that seems a little crazy to have Golden State as a favorite considering the status of Kevin Durant. Regardless, he's not going to be really playing for that team. I know Rudy Gay is an example, but I mean, Rudy Gay certainly wasn't the same player. Dominique Wilkins is really the only example of someone coming back from that injury and being relatively the same. Klay Thompson probably out for an entire season because these are injuries that happened you know, late June. Mm -hmm. These are late June injuries, and I don't think they're going to be in position to make deep playoff runs without those guys on the court. So it does seem weird uh, and to a means point where Toronto was incentivized to sort of keep everybody together because LeBron left. Now teams like Houston, who are planning on maybe scrapping, getting rid of uh, Chris Paul, now you're incentivized to go after it by keeping that unit together. Mm-hmm. Anthony Davis and LeBron James, even if you trade all those players, that might be good enough to get to a Western Conference Finals now because the West has really opened up. Yeah, to me it feels like the, we don't know anything. Like, uh, last we heard, there's a, a, a full 50%. Yeah, Amin's laughing because that applies to literally everything today. We don't know anything. We don't know what we're going to talk about. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the finals. We don't know what's going to happen to these teams. Uh, we do know that a full 50% of the league is eligible to be in free agency. 50% of the NBA is eligible to be in free agency this offseason. And some of those are really big names. So maybe for the first time in a while, even with LeBron switching to the West, that felt like a massive sea change for the league. That's not half as dramatic as what we're going to see this offseason when we could suddenly see massive names going to the Clippers, the Nets, the Knicks, the Lakers, and the Warriors all of a sudden 
looking like a, like nothing that we thought they would. Even if you were 100% convinced that Kevin Durant was going to leave, you did not think that next year's Warriors were going to be potentially Kevon Looney, assuming that he survives. Nobody else did. I'm worried about every part of him that's connected to his collarbone because you got, you know, Clay's left hamstring goes and it leads to the ACL. KD, it's calf, it leads to the Achilles. Kevon Looney needs to sit in a chair and not move for a while. But you've got, you know, Draymond and Steph, and then you try to figure it out from there. That's shocking to me. Uh, I want to next up talk about the other deep thought that I had about this, which is how much do we actually take what Kawhi Leonard just did as a trendsetter for the rest of the league, telling everybody else, you don't know what my body is doing. I'm going to trust myself, sitting out basically a whole year, becoming a rental that wins it all and then probably leaves versus what we've just seen from the Warriors, which is two guys who were like, I don't care what I'm feeling. I'm going to go out there for my team. And now both of them are facing lengthy, lengthy recovery. So we'll see if there's any trends there. I don't know if I, I think I have a sponsor to read. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> aggressive mess ESPN radio is presented by progressive insurance progressives home quote explorer gives you multiple quote options so you can pick what's right for you see for yourself at progressive.com baseball season is in full swing tune in tomorrow as Cody Bellinger and the Dodgers host the Cubs coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN radio and the ESPN app and now your sports center update NBA finals game six the Raptors defeated the Warriors 114 110 to win the NBA finals Kawhi Leonard finals MVP Clay Thompson, who tore his ACL, finished with 30 points and five rebounds. Caesars Sportsbook has Golden State listed as the odds-on favorite to win next season's NBA Finals at plus 280. The Lakers follow them at plus 500. The Raptors are listed at plus 1,000. With the Vivid Seats app, it's easy to find awesome seats to any game. Go to the App Store or Google Play and download the app and enter promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Don't buy just any seat. Get a Vivid Seat. For all the latest headlines and information, tune into Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. More than the stool. So, what is the best cut of fry? Did you guys come to a consensus or a determination of of some sort? Because it's clearly the waffle fry, isn't it? No, oh, no, 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 no. Nothing is no, going no, about no. this discussion. Oh, no, now, no, no. We're qualify this as an argument just yet. We're having a polite discourse, okay? The steak fry is overrated. You go original, you go curly, you even go wedge, you go crinkled. Guillermo, do you have an right. opinion of one uh, of any sort? The, the one that you can dip in baby food? I don't do that with fries, Dan. It's the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gotts. No Dan, no Stu. Stu's uh, taking in a lax game. Dan's taking a personal day. Amin and I are here. To really hold this ship down. It's well-timed. Well-timed. Ship is what I said. Ship. Uh, I don't know how you hold a ship down anyway. I don't. That think would be bad because it would sink. I think an anchor. Bad. That would Your be, anchors. An anchor probably doesn't. Uh, right. If we were choosing to anchor and enjoy a view or something as opposed to uh, taking the ship down, all the way down, which we might do by the end of the show, to be honest with you, because uh, zero show prep. Uh, you can't have two Stugatzes. It's really... Wait, Sarah, are you under the impression that like Dan does show prep? Yeah, um, you keep saying that as if uh, you keep this saying is like, there's no show. We haven't done any show yeah. prep. I've never done that show. Well, where was, no, like, I don't mean like a, I don't me mean like a rundown right, where you actually know what you're going to talk about. But I mean that you and I did not speak even for a moment about anything that we wanted to talk about today. Like not even a second of like, hey, what are you interested in? Hey, speaking of a hot mess, I got to read this real quick. There was a group chat. That's like infinite. That's a more lot of prep. A lot, that of, was prep a lot of prep. There were yeah. eight text messages. <laughs> we I nailed mean, it. <laughs> yeah. Eight more than usual. Uh, hey, guys, the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gatz is brought to you by Hulu, which has live sports. Watch live games and all your favorite teams on 60 plus top channels without cable. Live TV plan required. Restrictions apply. Learn more at Hulu.com. Father's Day isn't complete without Off My Insurance, the new eau de parfum a la progressive insurance. Head to getoffmyinsurance.com today. Um, I do want to get to whether what happened with Kawhi Leonard last year and this year will make any players reticent to listen to the doctors from their team and more likely to listen to their own bodies or whether it will affect uh, how much teams are willing to invest in rental players. But I do want to point out that last night, post uh, NBA Finals win, we got a couple things out of Kawhi Leonard that we rarely get, okay? We got f double fist pump over the head with the giant smile for about four seconds, and then inexplicably some guy ran up to him and he immediately shut it down. It almost felt like he remembered that he's not supposed to celebrate. It was very weird. But then in the locker room, we got that good Kawhi shimmy, like a full-on dance, big smile, 
We got more words out of him than I've heard in the entirety of his life. And we got Kawhi saying this about the trophy that everybody was fighting to try to win. Man, uh, last summer, man, uh, was going through a lot. Was going through a lot. And, you know, I had a great support system. I just kept working hard, working hard, and had my mind set on this goal right here. I came to a team, a new coach, that mindset was the same as mine, trying to get, trying to get that Larry OB over there. Ooh, sound of the day brought to you by mycomputercareer.edu, training for a better life. So the question, of course, is put it on the poll. Guy who says Larry OB, jerk or no jerk? I mean. Oh, man, you got to go no jerk, man, what? because it's quiet. Are you going to, he started talking, Sarah. Are you going to shame him now? Yes, of never course. Of all the words you've given us in your entire life, one of, one, uh, a couple of them are going to be the Larry OB. Mm-hmm. Let it, let, let it rot. Whatever, whatever that guy wants to say, as long as he says something. I, like you said, that's, <laughs> that's, not only was it more words, but it was actually emotion, yep. right? That, that I sense like. He, uh, like revelatory, he pulled back the curtain, and this is what the real Kawhi Leonard is like. And man, I'm not gonna complain now. I was like, oh, oh but you, you sounded like a jerk. No, man. Now, 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 if Kyle Lowry had said it, we'd be having a field day today. Okay. If Drake had said Different it, we'd well, be having yeah. a field day today. Oh uh, well, but did, but did you hear what uh, Drake actually said? Because I had never heard someone refer to Larry O'Brien as Larry O'B before, but I also never really heard quite what Drake described this championship as, and this comes courtesy of the Carlin Gay on Twitter. This is poetic. This is poetic. You just got to watch it happen. The six and six. Kyle Lowry with the ring. Kawhi Leonard bringing the chips to the city. I want my chips with the dip. That's all I know. I don't want my chips playing. I want my chips with the dip. So bring them this. That dynasty's over. We did what we had to do. Praying for, praying for KD, praying for Big Bobby. But tonight belongs to Toronto. And it's not, it doesn't mean, it's not about what it means. You know what it means. So he's praying for yeah. Big Poppy. I'm glad he got out there. Yeah. And he wants his chips with the dip. Yeah, I feel like he's been listening to this show and he's like all in on Stan Van Gundy's takes. He's like, I'd rather have I, plain uh, with a good dip than a flavored yeah. chip. All I caught from that was, <laughs> I could not hear a single thing. Okay, well, he inexplicably decided once once he started to go in on how excited he was about them winning a chip, he just, uh, this is probably what Drake's songs sound like before someone else rewrites them. I like my chips with a dip. That's probably the first lyric for his new album that's going to be entirely based on the Raptors championship. Uh, Chris, what are you, you got thoughts? I'm just thinking now, instead of Larry OB, he should have gone with, just call it lob. Yeah, call it the lob. The lob. Is this a new thing we're doing now? Instead of replacing the first letter, we're just, we're going to go all in, uh, what is that, an acronym? Just, he's trying to one-up Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> we're saying the acronym no, he, as a word. You know what he's doing? He's piggybacking off of last week when I said Stephen A. Smith. I just call him S, right? And then they oh. said, oh, you should call him S. SAS, SAS, next yeah. time you see him. So that's Lob is kind of the next generation of that. I'm really confused because Stephen A. Smith is up on my TV here and he looks to be on a regular set for first take. But earlier he was like luxuriating on the deck of what looked to be an Asian inspired resort uh, somewhere in California. And I was confused as to whether he was uh, what's happening with Stephen A. Are they are they are they filming out of some sort of they're still in uh, the Bay Area right now. Lake Merritt, yeah. right? Right, yeah, so that's, I think that's Lake, that's Lake Merritt. That's the there's a little restaurant right there on the lake that uh, they shoot the jump and first take from. Okay, so that must have been where he was at the beginning of this when he did the tease or the intro for the show. He was uh, leaning against a, a balcony of some sorts, looking over a, a resort. Um, all right, so Kawhi Leonard last year got a ton of crap, and it feels like two completely disparate things happened to Kawhi and KD, and yet both are resulting in similar things, which is. A lot of people who were dogging KD and didn't think that he was in it for, you know, the team and, and all this other stuff, this pound of flesh of, of losing him as a player and the injury, all of a sudden people are coming around to him. On the other side, Kawhi was getting all sorts of crap for sitting out and people thought maybe he wasn't devoted enough to the Spurs. And he's the one who's, uh, who's you know, being well-received now for making the right choice. So when we come back, I want to talk about how those two guys could be 
could be receiving some of the same accolades now for completely opposite things happening to them. Let's go. My private jet isn't going to fuel itself. If you think about building or replacing your deck this year, choose Trex composite decking instead of wood. Why? Trex never needs staining or painting, and it's engineered to resist termites, fading, and splintering. Wood rots and warps. Trex simply does not. Plus, Trex is made from 95% recycled materials and is 100% American-made. Visit the Home Depot today to see and feel Trex for yourself, including the new decking color Trex Enhanced Naturals in Coastal Bluff. Oh, yeah, this is it down Levan. And finally, it is physically impossible for you to lick your elbow. It is. No yogi, no, no, nobody, nobody who's double jointed, nobody. I can lick your elbow, but I can't lick my own elbow. All right, please don't do that. Amin El Hassan here to ruin everything for you and spoil the day you hoped for with Dan and the rest of the show talking about the NBA Finals win for the Raptors. I cannot guarantee you at all that they will come back on Monday and give you the show you had hoped to hear. So for Raptors fans, you're just SOL. You're never going to get Dan talking about your team being the champion. You're never going to get an intimate breakdown of everything that we saw on camera last night during the celebration. In fact, uh, I've probably ruined not only today for you, but your entire weekend. And uh, I guess sorry, not sorry is what we should say. I mean, that's that's kind of your take on things. No, no, I, I just love the idea that people are missing out on Dan telling us that the math has changed <laughs> in the NBA. And Stugat saying in his personal record book, uh, yes. Kawhi has three championships or maybe he doesn't have any because everybody got hurt. Who knows? Do you think that Klay Thompson tearing his ACL was step 23 for KD to get uh, uh, liked again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, thought, you know I didn't get to hear that, the, the full steps yesterday. I saw it on the screen. but it Oh, was you didn't miss much. Uh, Every single step was wait it out, <laughs> wait it out. I, yeah, I actually think the next two steps are wait <laughs> some more. Wait some more. Wait yeah. some more. Have a teammate also suffer an unbelievable injury uh, and make your whole team m much more sympathetic. Uh, speaking of that, do you think that – there are copycats in this league that will look at the Warriors, and of course there is something to be said for making five straight finals, shortened off seasons, the wear and tear of those guys being as dominant as they've been over the years. Um, but you think there are people who are going to look at what happened to KD and Klay Thompson and use that to decide that they want to do what Kawhi did instead, go against the doctors, maybe go against what the people out there you know, the media and the fans are saying about returning and what toughness means and what it means to be loyal to a team and say, listen, this worked out a lot better for Kawhi. Yeah, he had to sit out a year, but he went somewhere, you know, he didn't want to be with the Spurs anymore. He got himself out. He won a title. and Now he enters free agency at the top of the game. Yeah, I think it's a little different because what Kawhi sat out was the regular season, right? And so I don't think either of those guys would have played if it were a, a Tuesday in December, right? Or, or, or Thursday in March, right? This is the NBA Finals, and so I'm sure they didn't feel 100%, uh, and they knew the risk going in, and they went ahead and decided to take it. Uh, similarly, I, I don't know, if, would Kawhi have played if this was happening to him during the NBA Finals? I, I think we'd have our answer, because he got hurt after game three. Right. Well, we don't know Milwaukee. how that injury compares, but yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, to, to kind of say, well, everyone's going to do a quiet. Well, what quiet did was say, I'm not going to play these meaningless regular season games if I don't feel right. And the other thing that was happening was in the Golden State case, they said, look, you're not, you guys are clearly not 100%, but, you know, obviously this thing is not black or white. It's not either on or off. It's a, it's a spectrum there of how healthy is healthy, healthy enough to go depending on what, what the circumstances are versus if you if you think about uh san antonio they say, oh you're fine no you're fine no 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 the tests are all clear you're fine you're, you're perfectly healthy and that was that was the big thing there is the idea that if the athlete says the athlete knows his body better than anybody else if he says i don't feel right then it doesn't matter what test or what mri came back the guy doesn't feel right and so i think those two situations are different but the question is sarah is what quiet did this year which was load management right the idea that right yeah, I could play tonight. I'm not hurt. It's just I'm not going to put on that extra tax on my body. That's the question. Are we going to see more of that around the league from your star players? It, this is Kawhi last night being very open and emotional about the criticism from last year and his injury. A lot of people were doubting me. You know, thought I was um, either faking an injury or didn't want to play for a team. And it, uh, that was disappointing to me that uh, that was out in the media because I love the game of basketball. So me just going through that and I just knew that I have to make myself happy and no one else and I have to trust myself doesn't matter what anybody has to say about me I know who I am as a person I know how I feel and always just trust yourself so maybe because the injuries are different the time of year is different the expectations are different we can't say that what Kawhi did with his injury will affect players going forward. But what about free agency or maybe even the upcoming CBA negotiations when it comes to number of games played, you know, rest, back-to-backs, load management? You know, how much do you think that – let's let's start with the rentals. You've got a guy in, in Anthony Davis whose rep mm-hmm. is going out of his way to tell teams if you take him and you offer up assets, he's going to leave after a season. Is it maybe worth it now for teams to look at that and say, that's cool if he comes here and does what Kawhi did, we're down with that? Well, I mean, it's not just quiet. Paul George did the same thing, right? Paul George, they didn't everyone win a title, said he's going yeah. to Lakers. He's going to be a Laker. He goes there. He spends a year. It worked out. Um, I think ultimately it's all about, you know, what you're prepared to risk. If, you know, if you're a risk taker, and obviously risk taking is rooted in job security. So Danny Ainge can say, Rich Paul, that's nice. We're still going to trade for him because Danny Ainge knows if this thing doesn't work out, it's not like he's going to lose his job over this versus – say, uh, James Jones in Phoenix or, or uh, Vlade Divac in Sacramento. These are guys that don't have that job security to say, oh, no, no matter what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this job after this transaction. What do you think? I mean, because I'm wondering if we're only looking at the places that Rich Paul is pointing to. Is that, is that right? Is it right to think that the only teams that possibly have a shot at making this deal are the Lakers and the Knicks? Why wouldn't there be some team out there that says – we have the most to offer. We have actual successful NBA mid-level star kind of players that we can offer up versus the Pelicans having to just take what I think is a, a terrible deal for the kind of talent they have to give up if it's something like what the Lakers are giving up. Yeah, I mean, I think it all comes down to, again, that, that risk-taking behavior, right? Boston is a risk-taker. They're, they're, they'll be in that conversation. I'm interested to see if Toronto picks up the phone and says, all right, what can we do? To make something happen here um but ultimately again it, it all it all lies on the guy who's on the other side of that phone if that person feels confident that no matter what happens whether he stays afterward whether we win a championship in this year whether it just completely blows up in my face i'm still good right i still got my job that's that's where it comes down to and then the other part of it is we hear what the parties involved want us to hear uh yeah of course always anytime you hear leaked news Somebody leaked it, and they didn't leak it out of the kindness of the dumb old heart. They leaked it because they want a certain narrative or a certain spin. It's a reason why Kawhi Leonard, that entire year in San Antonio, I kept saying, isn't it funny that, like, everything we hear is an anti-Kawhi Leonard thing, which tells us he's not the one leaking this stuff. It's the team that's actively leaking it, right? So uh, if, if you're looking at it, Paul George got traded. Did anyone say Oklahoma City was going to be the place or was interested? We didn't nope. know anything about same that. Same with Kawhi and Toronto. Same thing, Kawhi, Toronto. Same thing, Porzingis to Dallas. Same thing, Tobias Harris to Philadelphia. It's still alive and well, this right. concept of, hey, we're not going to talk about deals before the deals are done in the NBA. But some people are chattier than others, and some agents are chattier than others. 
Yeah, that's why I, I think it's not as so much a done deal as everybody maybe thinks in terms of Anthony Davis. Uh, I want to get to a waterfall made of uh, donut glaze uh, and also Masai Ujiri allegedly fighting a police officer last night, uh, which is not what I expected as part of his celebration. Uh, but first, this Father's Day, gift dad a Tiso. Tiso is the official watch of the NBA, and the Tiso NBA collection offers different timepieces in all 30 teams. Plus, the newest addition, the Tiso Chrono XL NBA collector is made with official Spalding game ball leather. Every Tiso timepiece delivers quality performance and traditional luxury at an unbeatable price. Shop the Tiso collection at us.tisoshop.com and at select watch and jewelry stores nationwide. This is the Dan Lever. But when we signed our contract extension, I told Billy, and just Billy, I didn't do this with anybody else. I just told Billy, you go out and have a wild night out on me and just send me the bill. I got the bill. $59. <laughs> That's a hell of a night. Guests on the Dan Lebitard Show appear via the Shell Penzo performance line. Get in touch with us through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at Lebitard Show, at Sarah Spain, at Darth Amin. You know what never goes out of style? Surprising a friend or loved one with a dazzling bouquet or arrangement from 1-800-Flowers.com. Starting at just $29.99 to order today, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Going to get to uh, Amin, going to give you some time to talk about uh, Sudan a little bit later. We're going to get to that glazed waterfall. I want to ask the guys about a museum that I always pass on my way to lunch when I'm here in Miami and see if they've ever attended. Feels like a place Billy would like. I don't know why. Just seems like somewhere Billy would get into. Um, and I want Mike to go off on Steph Curry in a minute here. But first, I mentioned it before. Masai Ujiri uh, reportedly under police investigation after an altercation between the Raptors president and a sheriff's deputy following uh, the victory last night against the Warriors. Apparently, Ujiri pushed the officer and struck his face when the officer wouldn't allow him on the arena court to join the postgame celebrations because he didn't have the proper credentials, this according to NBC Bay Area. The deputy didn't know who the man was and asked for the credential, and that's when he tried to push past our deputy, and our de deputy pushed him back, and there was another push that kind of moved up and struck our deputy in the face, said a spokesperson for the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. Uh, so uh, we don't have a, a real uh, video of it, just kind of the aftermath is caught on a Twitter video. I mean, what do you make of this is a very uh, Kevin Hart situation, except for he actually belonged there? <laughs> And was, I guess, big enough to fight his way out. Well, well Drake, remember, Drake was uh, the original, hey, I, I'm supposed to be in there. No, you're not. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, arena security, these were cops, but arena security is tough around when you have a championship celebration. They, they put a rope around the court, and then, uh, like, people who have regular all-access credentials, that's not good enough. There's another higher level of credential that says you're allowed to be on the floor of uh, for for this for a trophy presentation and uh, they'll have every player will have a couple of friends and family that will have some of those but for the most part yeah it's it's hard and so I'm kind of wondering what happened to PR why didn't they get him his credential right why, I mean wh why, <laughs> why was did, he credentialist why didn't he have the proper uh, clearance uh, interestingly enough um, it was Kyle Lowry who ended up yeah. grabbing him up in a big hug Bring him out to the court, you know, telling him, hey, man, we're all over here, kind of, you know, ending this sort of altercation or or confrontation. Um, and I'm sure they feel a little bit better about each other now after winning a title. But the Kyle lowry Masai Ujiri relationship has been an interesting one for quite some time. So the fact that it resulted in the guy who just traded my best friend, who I haven't ever really gotten along with that well, is currently being held back by police, and I'm the one who has to, you know, grab him and, and bring him in. It sounds like... Yeah. Probably not that big of a deal in the end. I'm just like I think, first of all, for for Lowry, uh, and and DeRozan, I don't think they were upset that he got traded. They were upset that uh, apparently, allegedly, reportedly, or every other, you know, couching language in there, that he told DeRozan that he wasn't going to trade him, and then traded him immediately afterward. Right. right. Like that same week, he said, "No, no, no, you're not in trade. I keep hearing my name in trade talks. Like, no, 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 you're fine. You're good. You're going to be here." And then he traded him. Uh, which is unfortunate, but it's also why you don't tell players, no, we're not going to trade you. 
you know, when I worked for Steve Kerr, he was always very blunt. He said, look, I, we like having you here. You're great. But if we can make this team better and you're the price, that's what we're going to do. And so, uh, you know, I know uh, Shaq definitely uh, respected Steve Kerr a lot for that, for, for being upfront and very blunt about uh, that kind of approach. And so that, that's where that is. But, no, it is funny, though, uh, the idea that, of all the people to rescue Masai, mm -hmm. it would be the guy who's upset with him or who was upset was, with him at yeah. some point. Uh, Mike, you got something for Steph Curry? Yeah, where's your king now? I mean, where's your king now? Another brutal fourth quarter for Steph Curry. Obviously gets a, a pretty decent look at hitting one of the more important shots in that franchise's history. Doesn't go in. Uh, had some free throws that were a little controversial in my mind to sort of pad those fourth quarter stats. And I just keep hearing about how great this guy is. And when I see when the going gets tough for that team, he relies on guys like Clay Thompson and even Andre Iguodala to bail him out. Andre Iguodala outplaying Steph Curry at this point in time is an embarrassment that was not a good performance from Steph Curry I keep hearing about how great he is in the finals despite not having any finals MVPs and yet here we are yet again on the heels of a loss and elimination where Steph Curry could have been the hero and letting that team down your thoughts would you take him in Miami of course that's not the <laughs> argument that I'm making I would be very disappointed would you, would you though trade, would you trade five first round picks for him of course he's a wonderful okay. regular season player He's a wonderful uh, that, player. What's he averaging in the finals? 32 a game? I keep hearing about these stats. What's, about he, what's how, he averaging in the finals? Is it 32 points a game? What I care about is how he is in elimination games. And you cannot okay. tell me last night Steph was anything close to good for Steph Curry. You cannot tell me that. Hell, even Kawhi, who was the MVP, wasn't really Let me really ask you a question. If Steph's, if Steph's greatness is derived from running a specific offense, running the ball through him, getting open shots, creating space, and he loses all the pieces of that offense. It's not the same as if that happened to, say, like James Harden, and you're like, we'll just go out there and create some ISO play. Like, that's a different kind of player. So the expectation for him to be great in a completely different circumstance with no warning, that's a little... It's a great point. It's the smart point. And here was what I'm saying. <laughs> Andre Iguodala should not be getting the shots up. Why not? It shouldn't be Andre Why not? Iguodala. If you're running because a box and one shooter. on Steph. Because he's not he... a good shooter. Steph Curry's the greatest shooter of all time. Okay, but if you're getting if you're getting doubled or they're running a box and one to prevent just you from taking over the game, then shouldn't someone else on your team be able to make open shots know, the way that Iggy did? I know did? this sounds super sports fanny. Take over the game. and Overcome. You have all these injuries. Durant's out. That means more for you. It meant more for Clay. Why didn't it mean more for Steph? Now Clay's out. How do you know out? it didn't? It didn't because Steph didn't put, have these crazy numbers. He was very disappointing in that game. It's a fact. He, it's irrefutable that Steph Curry was disappointing. He was super disappointing in that in that series. Well, not in that series necessarily, but when the going <laughs> got tough, when the going got tough and they faced elimination, Steph Curry did what he always does, which is get outplayed by Andre Iguodala. He's 0 for 8 now, by the way, with the opportunity to shoot a go-ahead shot with 20 seconds left on the clock or under. So that's your that's your what, case. What, a, what an arbitrary number, by the way. Why 20 seconds? Because I'm sure at 25 it would uh, hurt my case. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about that glazed waterfall uh, coming up. And again, I, I, for whatever reason, I have a deep feeling that Billy's going to be very informed about this museum that I always pass. Uh, so I'm going to ask Billy about the museum and whether the glazed waterfall might be involved with that museum. Estás escuchando el programa de Dan Le What's the cinematographer doing? Where's the lighting? Is it too arty for you? Because I didn't see this episode. Is it arty or artsy? Uh, I think it's artsy. It is artsy. All right, yeah. put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Artie or artsy? Yeah, Artie art. is just, yeah. A man's name. It is a art. man's yeah. name. <laughs> it is, it's, it's Art Howe. It's, uh, that's what Art Howe's friends call it. <laughs> Artie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>
Wax. Available at O'Reilly Auto Parts or visit 303automotive.com. For all the latest headlines and information, tune into Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Sarah Spain, Amin El Hassan filling in for the guys on the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gatz. We're going to let Mike uh, rip on Steph Curry a little bit more later. But I wanted to ask more? you guys. <laughs> Amin's like, we are? <laughs> we are? Uh, I mean, don't be afraid to make a stop on Van Vliet. Wow. Turn him into oh, Steve no, Nash no, out he, there. What? What? Is he, is, is he immune to the concept of defense? Oh, we're going to do it now. Okay. This all-world player <laughs> getting outscored by six players in game six at the last game at the Oracle with a title on the line. Got outscored by Clay Thompson, who only played three and a half quarters. Got outscored by Iguodala. Got outscored by his assignment. It's a joke. It's a poor reflection on Amin El Hassan, basketball expert, to be caping up for such a man. You good? I'm done for now. Good. All right, so I have to ask you guys. I'm sure you heard about the Taco Bell Resort, yes? Everyone heard about the Taco Bell Resort. No. Yeah, Taco was, Bell Resort? Yeah. It's yes, a, it, it was, was a, a brief sort of pop-up resort. To, I think it has yet to, to happen, but the big publicity around it. Basically, they're taking over a pre-existing resort, and everything will be Taco Bell-themed. You can get uh, Taco Bell room service. I believe there's uh, hairstyles and nails and all sorts of beauty pro- uh, things you can get done relating to the to the brand. Anyway, people were very excited about this. I suggested that probably every one bedroom also came with two bathrooms. That seems like a requirement yeah. if you're going to be a Taco Bell Resort. But I have to ask you now, there is news that there will be an immersive Krispy Kreme flagship store with a glazed waterfall coming to Times Square. So not just your standard old Krispy Kreme store. Somehow immersive. I don't know exactly what that means, but when I hear immersive and glazed waterfall, it sounds like interactive, right? Like you might be able to engage with said waterfall so uh, we'll have the world's largest hot light which of course tells people when there's hot fresh donuts hot fresh donuts 24 7 stadium style eating inside the world's largest Krispy Kreme donut box an exterior walk-up window and again you know the digital and immersive interactive uh, activations like the glazed waterfall so I ask you guys you guys seem very invested in fast food and other things like this uh, would you rather stay at the Taco Bell Hotel or have an interactive experience with the Glazed Waterfall? This is easy. Taco Bell. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I, I heard that they're going to have a pool that's just made of the uh, chicken quesadilla sauce. <laughs> no way. I don't think that's true. That sounds awful. That's that sounds that sounds amazing. They that's should sound, do that. They should are you dipping notes. things into it or are you swimming in it? Well, either one. I, I'd love to. terrible. I, in my perfect world, I'm in it while eating a chicken quesadilla. Ew. And then uh, other people are in it too, and you're just eating they, food. They that clean it have out. Been in. They clean it out once a week. Ew. Once a Hold week. On. Hold a on. Week. Chris <laughs> went face down into the Clevelander pool. Trust me. He's got a whole That's lot else swimming around in his than, body. Than any... <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you go to a resort? Lots of drinking. What food do you want after oh, a night of heavy drinking? God. Nothing better than Taco Bell. Every alcoholic drink is at the Taco Bell Resort is just served with Baja Blast. <laughs> All right, I'll, so have a, I'll have is, a Baja this, and tonic. Is this no, universal? A Baja and tonic? No, no, Don't no, you I want that wrong. some alcohol rum in there? Baja or? the actual drink? Can I get a rum and Baja? It's, you could go with the mocktails at the Baja. Taco Bell Resort. Baja. A bum. Hey, uh, so is this universal? Everybody? Everybody? Taco Bell? Uh, Nobody I'll, wants a glazed waterfall interactive uh, activation? I'll take it. Well, I have questions, right? <laughs> so what does that mean? Like, okay, it's a waterfall. Okay, we just look at it. Do I put my hand in it? Do I, like, is it like a Willy Wonka where I just stick my head under the waterfall and just start drinking immediately? Yeah. It does seem like, allegedly, we're supposed to know about it because it says the iconic glazed waterfall, which leads me to believe that there already exists smaller scale glazed waterfalls in a regular Krispy Kreme. And maybe this is just a larger version of of it. It doesn't sound like that. As much as they claim it's immersive... It does not sound like you get to interact with the waterfall. Can I see it? Krispy Kreme, overrated. Whoa! Whoa. Nah, he's right. What? It's just a donut, man. Can I say it? I don't even like donuts. Well, you, uh, you're just that. I know, I'm very weird. Person, the you're only very human being person. on the show that agrees with me about food is Stan Van Gundy. By the way, I am obsessed with Stan Van Gundy to the point that I told him yesterday when I talked to him on, on Dan's phone when they were FaceTiming, that it might be an HR violation. I love Stan Van Gundy. I love everything he says. I agree with pretty much everything he says. The only thing I don't agree with is I don't watch all those Chicago shows. But other than that, Stan is spot on on everything, especially that plain flavored things with delicious dips are better than adding that flavor to the thing. 
plain mm, bagel better need, with a flavored cream cheese. Plain tortilla you'd chip. You'd rather have a, a plain chip than uh, like a plain chip dipping into sour cream and onion. Right. To have a sour cream and onion. Because chip. then you're probably actually eating closer to an approximation of actual sour cream and onion, whereas a chip that tastes like sour cream and onion is basically just whatever combination of chemicals they could best approximate that flavor. Yeah, delicious like, chemicals. <laughs> yeah, I feel like once you've arrived on these shores, you can't start to get picky <laughs> about is it real food or not. <laughs> well, either way, I uh, I guess we're all disappointed that the glazed waterfall is not something you can actually immerse yourself in. I don't want to go to the Taco Bell Resort either, though. I, I I don't know that I don't know that we've really thought through what the smells around that place would be. And I'm not talking about good food smells. I'm talking about if an entire resort of people are just downing Taco Bell 24/7. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not guessing that the poolside views are that great either. No, is it's all gassy. I'm saying. It's gassy. Speaking of donuts, Steph Curry is now 0 for 8 <laughs> with 20 seconds or less with the opportunity to put his team up on a go-ahead shot. He has failed all eight times. That is a big fat donut. I know you're doing a thing, Mike, uh, but out of curiosity, I'm do not you- doing a thing. <laughs> See, he should not be outscored by six players. This is a guy that was talked about as better than LeBron James a couple of years ago. This is a guy that already had the opportunity to win a Finals MVP and lost it to Andre Iguodala, who Amin says was a hipster pick, but I'd venture a guess to say that he was deserving of that Finals MVP. He's played in a lot of NBA Finals, Sarah, and he's never won the best player of the Finals. He wasn't the best player on the court. He wasn't even the fifth best player on the court last night he was very disappointing and it should be held against him stop not holding Steph Curry accountable for his lack of playoff guts just because he's cute and his family's adorable all right uh hey speaking of were you guys cool with Van Vliet getting one vote for the MVP or do you think it should have been unanimously Kawhi you saw who the vote was from though right yeah Hubie yeah Hubie Hubie Brown man Hubie went out there and said I'll say it I ain't I ain't scared to say it but I'm I ain't scared to say it myself Hubie Hipster pick. Really? Hipster pick. Yeah, Van Vliet was surprisingly good and outdid expectations for him, but to say that he was better than Kawhi Leonard is a bit of a reach. That's all you got? That's all you got to mean is shrug hipster pick? Yeah, man, because it's it's the same thing that got Andre Iguodala finals MVP. He played great, yes. He didn't play better than Steph Curry in that finals. I mean, you keep telling me how great Steph Curry is, and Van Vliet completely shut him down defensively. So I understand why he's a hipster pick. And when I think hipsters, I think of Hubie Brown. (laughs) You want to tell us what your real problem with Steph Curry is, Mike? My real problem with Steph Curry was I was a huge Steph Curry fan. I was leading the charge, or I was part of the charge, saying this is the best player in the world. And then I saw him go up 3-1 on the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I was looking for greatness. Ah, and okay. I, I saw greatness. You needed I him. saw someone rise to the challenge yeah. in LeBron James. Yeah. I've never seen Steph Curry rise to the challenge when the stakes are at their highest. Starting He's to understand great... now. You needed him to take out LeBron because of your own frustration and because, of my own because hate. he left Miami. Because of my own hate. Okay, because it's I didn't all coming together. See, <laughs> I didn't want to see LeBron James win a title. And you know what? I turned in that finals. I was happy for LeBron winning the title. I didn't want to see it, but I respected great. Greatness, and I have yet to see that greatness. I am doing sports media gas baggery right now, and I appreciate your support. He should have been better. He's overrated. Trade him. Trade him. Yeah, yeah the Warriors are in a great position to trade Steph Curry. Hey, speaking of, I want to talk about what position the Raptors actually are in heading into next season, uh, and we also have to get to that museum. But first, we all have busy lives, and even a seemingly simple task like heading to the grocery store can be a pain sometimes. That's why you need Walmart's grocery pickup and delivery. It's quick. Easy and convenient. Just download the Walmart grocery app or head to grocery.walmart.com to get started. Place your order, then pick an exact time for pickup or hour window for delivery. It's that simple, and pickup is free. You can trust Walmart's team of highly trained associates to always pick the freshest items for you, guaranteed, or your money back. Use our code WOWFRESH to get $10 off your first order only at Walmart. $50 minimum expires 12 31 19. Small fee applies. You are listening to the.
You can get in touch with us through the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed at Levitard Show, at Sarah Spain, at Darth Amin. And if you miss any of our interviews, if we have any, you can check them out on demand in the Dan Levitard podcast brought to you by Capital One. Capital One is reimagining banking, offering accounts with no fees or minimums that can be opened in five minutes. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One, NA member, FDIC. It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. And first, I'd like to say that someone sent me a GIF of the infamous Glaze Waterfall. It is pretty delicious looking, but it's much smaller than I imagined. So my guess is that uh, if the one in Times Square is not significantly bigger, it'll be a massive disappointment to anyone who goes there looking for an immersive Glaze Waterfall. Are there people swimming in it? Can you look at it? It's basically just like the rack of donuts moves by and travels underneath a waterfall of glaze that covers them. I saw it. This is what I'm thinking. What if they have one of those glazed waterfalls over a lazy river? So you're basically in a donut Ooh. going through it. Here's the thing. All these ideas, they sound great at, at the beginning, right? This, like, swimming pool made of chicken enchilada sauce or whatever you said, and then this waterfall lazy river. The problem is is that you're not going to get it only in your mouth where you want it. You're going to have an entire body covered in glaze. Good with it. <laughs> And the showering alone, like the getting it out of your hair and your clothes, just doesn't seem worth when you could just put it in a in a cup and drink it if you really wanted to drink it. Now you got me thinking about a shower, a frosted shower. This is awesome. All right, we'll get to that in a little bit. Is it warm? But uh it does appear to be warm. It looks warm. Because the glaze is probably gonna be a little more uh amenable to being dunked onto a donut and dripping down the sides than if it's chilled. So it looks like it's probably a warm glazed waterfall. You cool with that, I mean? Nice. Yeah. Just, just want some I details. I, mean, okay. I, I don't. I don't understand what the what the sell is for me to go to Times Square for this, but okay. Well, if you're already in Times Square, that's your first problem, I think. And then while you're there, you might as well witness a glazed waterfall. Uh, I mean, you know, I saw on your Twitter last night, or maybe it was uh, the day before, and you're wearing your Sudan shirt today. So I, I know you said you were hoping people could kind of signal boost some of this. I'm not sure what you're comfortable talking about on the radio or, or if you are, but I feel like now's a good time to take advantage of kind of drawing people's awareness to it. Yeah. No, uh, you know, what's happening is so we had a very brutal dictator who ruled the country for 30 years. He was overthrown in April. Uh, it was a happy time. It was overthrown by um, peaceful demonstration. Right. It wasn't it wasn't a violent overthrow. Um, and, and so there was a transitional government that was. Uh, basically the military and and the idea was this was going to transition to a pure democracy of a free state and the guys who are in charge uh, basically changed their mind and when I say change their mind I mean uh, about a a week and a half ago uh, open fire and attack peaceful demonstrators uh, peaceful unarmed demonstrators with um, uh, armed militia and we've had over I mean well over a hundred deaths uh, you've got bodies being dumped into the Nile. You have uh, assault, sexual assault happening. Uh, you've got medical professionals being prevented from doing their job of, of caring for people who are hurt or injured uh, or dying. Uh, and many of these many of these protesters are young people uh, under the age of 25, kids who have n- never known anything other than living in a police state. And you know, Sarah, you remember when I came on your podcast, I talked about. I grew up when the dictatorship started, and I, I, I lived across the street from uh, what they call the ghost houses, where they used to secret police would take people and, and torture. And so what's happening right now in Sudan is, is we finally kind of got out under that guy and his, his lieutenants and the, the other kind of characters who have been around are, are making sure that it's not going to be a, a peaceful or a safe transition to, to a d- democracy. And I said on my Instagram yesterday, I don't claim to have answers. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to do, uh, but I know that people need to know what's happening. And so that's been kind of, I guess, right now, for now, that's been the good thing. You see, I mean, Cardi B, Rihanna, uh, J. Cole, uh, all types of uh, different people from the world of celebrity. And it doesn't mean much, right? It's not saving anybody's life. But it's getting the word out there because, as I said yesterday, there's a lot of people don't even know where Sudan is, never heard of it. And, and for me, the, the tough part is I, I deal with a lot of guilt about not being there, uh, of not being able to do more. Um, 
and I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, but I'm, I'm going to talk with some people over the next few days, and we're going to try and figure out what are some tangible things that we can do uh, to help. Well, it must be especially frustrating because this is the tendency, especially here in America, is uh, people of color, countries full of brown people being ignored while we all extend our greatest remorse for Notre Dame Cathedral, which is, of course, a memorable and historic place. But we all are up in arms about the sadness of a building with history to it um, burning. Yeah. And then we all but ignore massive humanitarian crisis in places that uh, are full of people that don't look like us or, or that we don't feel connected to uh, via humanity, which is, which is a, a doubly sad part about this. Sarah, the, the one that always stuck with me was Cecil the Lion. People yeah. were about to lose their mind because a lion got shot. I'm like, th th these are human beings who are getting killed. And by the way, I want to make something really clear. It's not a civil war. It's not like, hey, the counter-revolutionaries are attacking. A peaceful protesting. People just sit, congregating in public areas, chanting, uh, making signs, being attacked by people armed with uh, machine guns and rifles and things like that, and, and uh, attacked indiscriminately, right? right? Just because it's it's and a so there was a thing. promise of a democrat democratic state taking over with with this new regime, and they decided it would be more beneficial to them selfishly to kind of m maintain a, a different kind of control. Yeah, and it gets it gets so much deeper because you say, well, how is this? How how are these people funded? And and they're receiving funds from Saudi Arabia. Uh, because we've been sending child soldiers over there to help fight their war in Yemen. Right. And so it's just, it's, it's disgusting on so many levels. Um, but, you know, it, I feel a little, a little positive that it's being talked about. You know, Hassan Minaj on his show, Patri Patriot Act, uh, had a, a tremendous whole episode devoted to it. And it really broke down, I think, for people who don't know anything about Sudan. It's a nice 18-minute primer about everything that's happened up until this point. Why did we call it the Sudan before? Because uh, in, in Arabic, it's El Sudan, which is the Sudan. I always so. wondered that, because when you came on my yeah. podcast, I immediately stopped calling it that, because I realized it was apparently not correct in, in English. No, that's correct. It's either or. It works. It works. Uh, yeah. Billy, important topic. Glad we're talking about it. Yeah. It's an important uh, conversation. I'm glad we're having it. Thank you. Good. Yeah. I was looking for Stugat's voice. Yeah. Derek, Derek Dietrich. He's busy over there doing something else. You want to transition to that? Yeah. Now? You want to talk to Derek Dietrich yeah, or are you good? Yeah, good? Transition. He had one of those red string boards with Derek Dietrich's face Perfect. on it. Perfect. Uh, that was Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Everything for less only at Walmart. This Father's Day, give dad a Tissot. Tissot is the official watch of the NBA and the Tissot NBA collection offers different timepieces in all 30 teams. Plus, the newest edition, the Tissot Chrono XL NBA Collector, is made with official Spalding Game Ball leather. Every Tissot timepiece delivers quality performance and traditional luxury at an unbeatable price. Shop the Tissot Collection at us.tissoshop.com and at select watch and jewelry stores nationwide. You guys familiar with uh, with Ed Helms? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, he was on Anna Ferris's podcast, and they were talking about. You know, he, he had a movie coming out and red carpets and just questions that they get asked in the media and questions they like answering, questions they don't like answering. It was on a radio, one of those morning zoo crew radio interview hey, kind of thing. Hey, yeah. yo, oh, yeah. Ed, oh, my, oh, yeah, it's and, Zippy and the Juice. Yeah. Which one are you, Zippy or yeah, the you're, Juice? It doesn't you're, matter, you're, there's you're an end there. Yes. It doesn't matter, your name is on the show. Yes. Zippy. He's the <laughs> Juice. <laughs>
Bye. For all the latest headlines and information, tune into Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. So it's Sarah Spain, Amin El Hassan, ruining your Friday and the rest of your weekend and potentially all of next week by being here instead of Dan and Stu. And we just talked to Amin about uh, Sudan. And uh, not surprisingly, this gentleman on Twitter, whose name is Anthony Miggs, writes, Bull bleep. We have our own issues and crises right here, right in America. What the hell are you talking about, Sudan? Really? Is that guy? Thanks for your input, Anthony. Uh, so, guys, every time I'm in Miami, I uh, go to the same exact restaurant for almost every meal. It's very weird. I realize that. I, I, you guys know I eat weird, healthy stuff. And there's this place called Juice and Java down the street, uh, maybe around like 14th or 15th in Washington, I think it is. And so it's just really easy, and I only have an hour off pretty much every day when I'm here. I work straight through from about 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. So during that hour, I go to the same place. They know me now. And every time I go there, I have to walk by a place called the World Erotic Art Museum. And for whatever reason, I feel like Billy is someone who has insight for me on this place. What is inside that place? What goes on there? Is it like a peep show kind of place? Is it high-end art? What's happening? I have never been there. I imagine that there's eroticism inside if i were to guess but i did some digging Good investigative reporting there i did some I digging do. and i found someone who's been there and is an expert on the subject and i brought the person on the line if you want to talk to that person about it i thought dan was off today oh i couldn't get dan but i got a fellow creepy individual by the name of lorenzo <laughs> oh, of, oh, course. of course and he's an expert well in this uh, we don't have anything to talk about i mean this will take a couple hours and <laughs> give us absolutely no information all right lorenzo I'll let's get a drink i'll be back yeah Lorenzo, tell us about the World Erotic Art Museum. What's up, everybody? It's, 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 I'm happy to get frisky with you guys on a Friday. Oh, no. This is off to a terrible start. Um, well, what's the going World on Erotic there? Art Museum, or the WEEM, as, as also known as, uh, is this very uh, unorthodox museum on South Beach. I went a few years back when I was just a, a journalism student at FIU, Go Panthers, um, went to this place. I met the, the curator, the founder of the museum, uh, the, of the late Naomi Wilzig, very delightful old lady. She's no longer with us. But her son, a recording artist, he wanted to – it all started with him wanting to collect erotic art. Uh, so she was an art collector. She liked art. He, she got on, on the case and started looking for just erotic What a great of family artwork. bonding moment. Mom, can you help me find erotic – Art, sure, son. Also, I'm a recording artist. Yeah. <laughs> so she went around, started collecting things. Uh, the two flag, like the two main pieces, the big uh, top pieces they have in the museum. Uh, one, they have a Kama Sutra bed. Whoa. It is a wooden bed with uh, scenes of the Kama Sutra carved into the bed, and the posts, the bed posts, are uh, phallic nature. That seems useful, right? So, you know, they have, like, apps for that and stuff, but if it's just carved into the bed, then you don't have to pull yeah, you out your phone or the bed you don't have to oh, pull out the go. book and the Let's bedside table. It's just right there on the bed. got one of those Sedino Chara beds. Did you see that he posted a selfie video uh, of himself, a photo of himself, like, eating, like, a protein bar, and people noticed that on his bed there were hooks on the post for bondage? That's Maybe. terrifying. By the way, can we talk about how underrated it I mean, I'm just saying, Sedino Chara having hooks on his bed is terrifying to me. The underrated uh, surfer guy far away from the mic when you said he was six foot nice. Nobody gave you the credit you need for that. Uh, All right, so message. back to this Kama Sutra bed. Where did they procure this thing? Is it is it historical in nature? That I don't know, but she's, yes, actually, she's she's collected that. Whoa. She has some uh, pictures of Marilyn Monroe from Playboy magazine. Like She was the big first get for Playboy. Those are in there. Uh, she also has the, uh, the phallic... Uh, Death weapon in uh, Clockwork Orange. Oh, wow. That's a dangerous one. I'm sorry. Clockwork Orange. Clock, yeah, careful with that. Ah. Clockwork Orange. I'll just tell you, I just went to the website for Weem, uh, weem.com, and uh, among the different areas that you can search to see if you're interested, uh, we've got you know African, Native American, Asian room, comedy and glass, drawings, gay, genitalia, historical... I feel like genitalia is the entire museum, though. Well, there is one piece that seems to take up a great majority of one room. I think you can guess what it is. Uh, all right, anyway, the point is, uh, is it worth a visit? I pass it every day. Again, I only have an yes. hour every day. Should I skip my lunch and instead take a stroll through the high-end 
erotic art of Weem? I would totally suggest it. It's on the Atlas Obscura. They've they've, yes, they've done okay. write ups on it. Um, I loved it. I mean, it was it's there's some artwork that's a little uh, jarring. Right. But I mean, you can take a date out there. You can you can just stroll through, get some get ideas mood. for later on. Yeah. Yeah. A little, I, I, a little I would, rec- I would certainly the recommend the, uh, it. Amin is on the phone. I think he's trying to get himself removed from the show. I think. Yeah. Amin is currently trying to oh. ask out of the remaining portion of the show he's I already mean, committed to appearing on. We, I can't believe. See, this is why people don't like us when Dan and Stu aren't around, Sarah. Why? Because well, you let open reasons. the doors. The, the, the house was nice and secure. You opened the door. You threw away the key. And you let Lorenzo scamper in. To talk about a Just over art. everything. To talk about. I'm sure I there's a room I for that. I rich, enhance yeah. the show, Amin. Come on now. I'm sure there's Wait, a room for... Wait, can we show for... this picture? Hold on, hold on. Take, take, take a look at this bed. Peeing all over things. I'd like to show more, but it's it's Disney television, so... <laughs> Are you showing this on uh, on television right now? Wow, the big, they're big news. fans of the show, huh? You know what's funny is I, uh, I whenever I come on your show, I forget that it's on TV. Wow, that was a poor choice of words. I apologize. Billy, <laughs> that's your <laughs> fault. I wasn't <laughs> even going to react until your face. Uh, whenever I appear on your show... I stop it. I uh, always forget it's on television. Oh, there it is. Nice. And then um, I was walking through the airport and at like, you know, whatever time, 11 a.m. And I'm looking at a bunch of people having breakfast with your show on this giant TV in front of them. And I was like, oh, that is on television when I'm like, whatever I'm talking about, there's subtitles. So someone right now is trying to eat breakfast at an airport looking at. An erotic Kama Sutra bed and giant phalluses. Do You're we, welcome, I guess, ever, is what I'm saying. Do we know who does the closed captioning? Because, I, like, sometimes I watch the show and I, I'm listening to the ridiculous things that Stugatz is saying, and I'm thinking, there's someone there who's got to, like, transcribe this on the spot. <laughs> and do you think that person, person takes we... their work home and they're like, man, the guy today, you should have heard <laughs> what I had to write out. And how do you write when Stu Gatz only pronounces three letters of a 13-letter word. Like, imagine the you, difficulty I, I, of trying to transcribe the Stu Gatz game when, uh, uh, why am I blanking, British, John John Amici is on. John Amici. Yeah, who's yeah. in charge of transcribing that game? Buh. It's just dashes, by the way. That's how <laughs> they do it. It's just dashes. I would like to see them just give up and just write, you know, nonsensical or gibberish or, uh, you know, catch it on the next segment when they might start using real words again. Uh, we can all we have, have biz- that? Can, Go ahead. Can we get that person on? Yeah, can we Can we Allison. find out who that is? Yeah. <laughs> Lorenzo, I'm Allison. sure, works somewhere near that person. Lorenzo's no, probably the best you know bet what? to find out. I feel like those people are, are hired by the, uh, like there's a larger company that does it for the whole network. It's not affiliated with the show. But yeah, Lorenzo, still, why don't you get on that? Thank you. Uh, we all have busy on lives. It. And even thank you also for your insight on Weem. Uh, I'll, I'll have to add it to my itinerary next time I'm here. Look yeah. forward to that. We all have busy lives, and even a seemingly simple task like heading to the grocery store can be a pain sometimes. That's why you need Walmart's grocery pickup and delivery. It's quick, easy, and convenient. Just download the Walmart grocery app or head to grocery.walmart.com to get started. Place your order, then pick an exact time for pickup or hour window for delivery. It's that simple, and pickup is free. You can trust Walmart's team of highly trained associates to always pick the freshest items for you, guaranteed, or your money back. Use our code WOWFRESH. To get $10 off your first order only at Walmart, $50 minimum expires 1231.19. Small fee applies. Estás en sintonía con el. Guys, insane? Try it on his own? Have you guys lost your bleeping mind? What the hell is the matter with you guys? He's an old person. Like, wait, hold on. Guys, no wonder they don't trust us. No. Yeah, no wonder they don't there trust us. There, We're there, surrounded there, by there, idiots. There, there, right, let him down. Let him down. That was not visually entertaining. That was not audio entertaining. That was just the height of executive incompetence. You wanted Greg Cody on his own to do a handstand.
now I really got to go. Maybe with Stu Gatz. Oh, what a nightmare. What? An, I cannot think of worse outing than that, other than maybe uh, the B outing at a Padres game. Um, I wanted to ask you, Mean, we were talking about this for the hockey game, but now it works for, for NBA as well. Would you rather, the rest of the shipping container as well, would you rather that your team lose in a game six and you never get your hopes up and you just say, you know what, they were the better team, or lose in a heartbreaking game seven? You're losing either way, so don't tell me there's hope in a game seven. Either way you're losing. Would you rather have the heartbreak of getting yourself fired up for a game seven and seeing it all come crashing down when you've worn the outfit you plan on celebrating and you've cleared out your schedule the next day, you've already lied about some appointment you have for your boss just in case you get hammered and end up in an alley somewhere? Or would you rather just in game six say, we never had a chance, they're better? Two greatest words in sports, game six. No, I mean game seven. <laughs> no, you want to go to game seven because here's the thing. When you lose in seven, you can always say, ah, we could have won that, right? Like there's an element of it's a coin flip once it gets to seven, right? If you lose in six, no, you, you weren't better than them. But isn't it better to just know you weren't as good and that's why you lost than to have to litigate, relitigate every single bounce and call and decision? Like then the rest of your life, you're wondering what if, whereas game six, you're kind of like, we didn't have it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think people, I don't think anyone ever wants to admit that they weren't good enough, right? You always want to say, yeah, but this, that, and the other. You want to make all these caveats for why you didn't win. You always want to have that plausible deniability. In Game 7, that's what it does. It gives you plausible deniability. Like, look, we, we could have won. We, we could have been us. It just didn't go our way. Yeah, but it wasn't you, and you were there for no. it, and you had to watch everyone around you celebrate. Yeah, but that, you said we're going to lose either way, right? Hold on. Right. I, I thought that's so. Yeah, it but the matter. point is a game six, you have no chance of winning that night. You're there. They beat you. You did not think you were going to win. You watched them. You were sad that you lost. You didn't force a game seven, and it's over. Game seven, you could be, you have just as much of a chance to celebrate and be excited, and instead you're there sad, and everybody around you is, is doing the thing that you had hoped guess, the end of the night would bring for you. I guess I would say, would you rather say they beat me because they were better or they beat me because they're lucky? I'd rather say they were lucky. Well, we always know why people are beating you, I mean, It's because you're not good at anything. Phew, that's not true. You watch my Ninja <laughs> Warrior video? I have yeah, several yeah, times. That yeah, is yeah, basically what I'm basing my opinion off of. Yeah. No, I'm, ta I'm yeah. talking about I'm really good at producing. Uh, oh, that, that's true. That, uh, Your laughs. Part. Laughs for people. Uh, guys yeah. in the back, six or seven? Six. I'm just really envious of how the Warriors lost this year because that's actually like one of the Somewhat, uh, if you can just sort of separate the fact that they've lost Clay and Kevin Durant long term, that doesn't sting like a real loss right. because ah, if we had our full squad, we would have beat those guys easy. This wasn't even a fair fight. I can't even really get that invested in this because it wasn't a fair fight. And history will remember how shorthanded we were. Not a real championship. Yeah. That's clearly what they can tell themselves, right? Even if other people don't necessarily. A lot of people picked the Raptors before this started. That was in part because we didn't know about Katie's availability Chris in this is instance I would say seven because you don't want game six you want to win your last game at Oracle right so I don't know that in one general, I, get. I get your question in general but this specifically in this but example, game seven really would have been Will Smith at the end of Fresh Prince for Clay I mean for Steph Curry he really would have been like all right who's left here like I'm, I'm on my own which would have been great for Mike Ryan because oh, then he would have laid it in. It would have been awesome. Been... Initially, I thought uh, I was – I know it's a, it turned out to be a team technical when Draymond called yeah. the timeout, but I was hoping in like <laughs> some sort, there was some sort of machination in which Draymond got the technical yeah. for calling the timeout, and they still force a game seven, and then it was just Steph and baby boomer Andre Iguodala. <laughs> Roy? Going into it knowing that my team's going to lose, I would say game seven because I would say, hey, my team is good enough to get to a game seven. Yeah. You're not going to know it beforehand, though. Oh, well, then game seven, then. Yeah. See, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Game six. A hundred percent game thinking... six. Because if you lose in game six, you're not going back and you're saying, well, what if, you know, in game three, this didn't happen or right. game two didn't happen. If in game seven you lose, you can go back to every other game in the series and drive yourself crazy with a thousand excuses where game six is just like, well, even if this went a different way, then we'd have to win game six and we'd have to win game seven. And you just you you kind of accept like you know what the other team was just better than us. Has a has a team that you guys root for ever lost a game seven to win it all? Not en route to a championship, but to win it all. Because most recent for me was obviously 2016 with the Cubs. The Cubs fought back from down three one, 
if they had won that game six to send it to a game seven and done all that, like coming back and then lost it on that Rajay Davis, like if that had given them one more run (laughs) and we hadn't gone to extras and they hadn't won it, like that would have been the saddest thing in the history of the Cubs. And that's saying something because that is the saddest team in the history of sports. Like I would have been witness to the worst thing that's ever happened to the team that's already had the most things happen to them. You can never complain about rain delays ever again in your life. Like never. But I'm just saying, like, that, if we had lost in Game 7, that actually would have hurt way more than if it had just been over in Game 6. Marlins don't know nothing about losing in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, we, don't, yeah. we don't lose in the they playoffs. They simply do not lose. Every time they make it to the playoffs, they come away with a chip. Yeah. And then they, they know. get that chip with a dip. They know well, they about winning a Game 7, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing is I've been lucky enough to never – I have not in my lifetime, I don't think, had a team make it to a championship and not win except for the Bears. Mm. What? Oh, that's that's pretty good. If they they either don't make it or if they make it, they win. Sarah, I see your shirt today. You know how the Marlins perform in a game seven, right? Right. That's right. Uh thank you. Thank you. For... That game six was more painful than game seven though for you, wasn't it? Anyway, we're running out of time. Wow. Alex time... Gonzalez has to turn that. Time is running out. Routine. Oh wow. Something else coming up. Oh yeah, caballo. This is the Dan Levatar show on ESPN. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show up here via the Shell Penzo performance line. And now your Sports Center update. Angels designated hitter Shohei Otani became the first Japanese born player to hit for the cycle in Major League history. Within the language of the contract extension that John Calipari signed, Calipari has the option to step down after the sixth year to become special assistant to the athletic director. And finally, Hugh Grant says he's too old, ugly, and fat be a romantic comedy leading man with the vivid seats app it's easy to find awesome seats to any game go to the app store or google play and download the app and enter promo code champs at checkout to get 10 percent off your first order don't buy just any seat get a vivid seat for all the latest headlines and information tune into sports center on espn radio all throughout the day i mean Hassan, sarah spain in to ruin your friday on the dan levitard show with stugatz stugatz uh going to yell at Teenage girls about soccer. I mean, lacrosse somewhere. Virginia, I think. Uh, uh Uh-oh, now I've given everyone the state Stu Gotts is in, and everyone's going to rush to Virginia and try to find him. I mean, if (laughs) if he's actually telling the truth. Well, yeah, we don't actually know. He might be at Weem, for all we know. (laughs) Hey, speaking of, can you put that on the poll, Billy? uh, Is Zdeno Chara having hooks on his bed terrifying? You can do that. Thank you. Uh, It's at Lebitard Show on on the uh, 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed. Now I'm just randomly throwing out sponsors just in case I miss any. Uh, Amin, I ask you this. You mentioned earlier when we were talking about um, the Raptors, and I said, is this the two teams in the history of the NBA that have been the most bad off after just winning or going to the NBA Finals because the Warriors are suffering from serious injuries and the Raptors are likely to lose Kawhi and could also lose Masai Ujiri. How attractive do you think the Raptors are as a destination right now? If Kawhi does indeed leave, they will have room to add another big name player, and they clearly have depth and talent, the kind that can support a max player trying to, to to win a title. How attractive do you think that might be to a potential big name free agent? Mm, I don't know. Like, depends. It all depends. If you're telling me Masai is not there, obviously it starts with who's who's selling the sales pitch, right? If it's if it's Masai, if it's uh, the general manager Bobby Webster. Uh, you know, then I, I have some faith in that. But, you know, it's, it's more than just the city or, or a roster. You have to sell the entire experience to them. And, and if you're a max free agent, is there any party that says, well, if it's so great, why couldn't you keep Kawhi? Right? That would be my first question. Well, if this wouldn't is you assume awesome to situation. yourself that Kawhi is sort of a guy that's difficult to read and that it, you can't look well, at that situation and presume that that means anything about what it was like there? Does, it doesn't mean that I won't ask that question, though, right? Right. right. That, like you, people telling you that this is the greatest job ever. Then why, why didn't you guys just keep the person who was doing it before? What happened? What was way more intriguing about somewhere else to him than being here? And you guys just won a title. So have have you, in talking to different players around the league, had legitimate, real conversations about? not wanting to be in Canada, not wanting to play in another country, not wanting to be cold, whatever reasons that we hear 
for why Toronto is not a great destination. Is that legitimate, or are players uh, more interested in money and the opportunity to win than they are in whether or not they need to use a passport to get in and out to play other teams? Money is always number one, and do you need a passport that for Canada? Is big- uh, uh, yes, you do now. Yes, Cause, you yeah, because I used to go from L.A. into Mexico and not need it, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, no, I suddenly need to. Okay. Anyway. This thing happened in 2001. Something happened, yeah. Later. Yeah, things yeah. happened, yeah. Uh, but, but uh, no, no, the, 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 the money part is always going to be number one, but that's baked into why Toronto's not quite as attractive as the taxes. The taxes in Toronto are way higher than even the highest taxed, uh, it's either New York or, or, or California. Uh, but New York has like a city tax or something like that. But Toronto blows them all away. And so there's an element of, yeah, I get less bang for the buck uh, in terms of how much take home I get. On the opposite side, your American dollar is a lot stronger in Canada. So, you know, you get to buy more things. But, yeah, no, that's number one. Money's always going to be a number one thing. And that's always going to be a really big obstacle for them as far as attracting free agents. How much more taxing is NBA travel for a team like the Raptors? Uh, I imagine they go through customs at every city, and it's just uh, probably more of a nuisance for them than any other team, right? No, I mean, not really. When you when you look at it, you go on a road trip, there's, there's only one team in Canada. So every road trip, you, you're not going through, I mean, other than that initial flight out, uh, you're not really dealing with all that other stuff. The other thing you got to remember well, is Well, no, you're dealing with it every time through. you leave and come back. That yeah, other but they're not don't. going through. They're they're not going through the regular airport where there's a grandma who's right. They're who not wants at like to know why she can't bring this food in. Right. Yeah. Like, um, so they, they've got they've got their own little uh, terminal with their own TSA agents and everything on the tarmac. Right so you're by saying the they have pre-check? They have they got TSA it's, pre-check. It's even better than pre-check. Yeah, they have that. Better. They have that clear they thing. Clear. Clear. Yeah. yeah. Clear. Yeah. They, they don't have clear. to take their shoes off. Yeah, it's amazing. Kawhi Leonard does not have to take not his take his shoes off. Because when the show started, you seemed to be pushing back on the idea that the Raptors are in a bad spot for a team that just won a title. And then yeah. he said, it's, really, something it's great for on. Toronto because it's something that they can build on. I mean, of course, <laughs> we all can build on. So anyway, we're reading tea leaves here. We don't know for sure, but it feels like he's gone. And that's been then every indicator from sources and whatever else. So if he leaves and we don't know if Masai Ujiri is going to leave, his contract situation with the Raptors and everything else could prevent it. Or he might just decide that he wants to stay in this place that he's going to be heralded as, as you know, a dream front office guy for pulling all this stuff together and bringing them their first title. But let's say they both leave. I'm pretty down on what that means for this team going forward and having to essentially rebuild even though they just won it all. You seem to be positive except for there's a lot of ifs in your positivity. If Masai stays, if this happens – it doesn't sound like players are dying to go there. Yeah, I mean, it's look, they didn't build a team by signing big free agents. And the idea that signing a big free agent is the only way that you can build a, a championship contending team is kind of, it's, a, it's, it's not true, right? Um, Masai is obviously great. Uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, his general manager, Bobby Webster, is a really bright guy as well. If Masai were to leave, I would assume, I would assume that would be Bobby's job uh, to, to, to basically keep. Uh, and then you still got to look at you got Van Vliet, you've got uh, Pascal Siakam, you've got uh, Norm Powell. I mean, you, you have some guys that are good role players, and then you got a guy in Siakam who looks like he can be more than just a role player. Um, but yeah, like, is, is, does that mean Anthony Davis is, is, can't wait to get to Canada? Probably not. And so for them, their, their burden, which has been their burden all along, is how do we turn what we have into something else? They did it once upon a time by drafting a guy named DeMar DeRozan, and then they did it once again by trading a guy named DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard. And throughout the entire history of the Raptors, what was the last big free agent they signed? Right. 
I, I can't even I can't even remember. It's always like uh, Don Salmons. Or, or well, like, and also like none of this team, not a single lottery pick. So they did yeah. it in in ways that you know are are not are not usual. Hey, I wondered. I was kind of going back and forth with some people on social media about this. I thought Doris Burke was seamless and perfect in the post game, handling all the interviews in part because I like getting that initial excitement from guys. But then I thought it was interesting for her to ask Lowry about what it is and what it means to him to do this without DeRozan. I think you have to, by requirement of ABC ESPN contract, ask Kawhi in that moment if he's coming back, just in case he slips and tells you something, even though you know he's probably not going to answer. A lot of people wanted her to just sort of get the guys to be excited and not ask these in-depth questions. I, I, I thought she was perfect. Yeah. No, she did, she did her job. Shocker, right? Right. <laughs> We're mad at her for doing her job. Uh, and, and by the way, I've done the sideline thing once before during summer league, so it's not exactly the same stakes. But you have your earpiece, and in your ear, even if you're like, "Well, I want to ask this question," you got to produce it. Ask him if he's coming back. Ask him if he's coming back. Right. Ask him if he's coming back. So you just at some point, you're like, "Are you coming back?" Right. And of course, they're going to give the the standard answer, but you have to ask the question. You can't just assume what the answer is going to be. She, she did so well, and I thought uh, Kawhi did pretty well answering the question under the circumstances, but he could have absolutely won everybody over mm-hmm. by just dismissing it by saying, Apple time. Apple time. Apple time. The legend that we all want to be <laughs> the true. The legend that we wanted to be true. No, I think she did a great job, and I think – I thought she set up Masai Ujiri to give a shout-out to Dwayne Casey and DeMar DeRozan and people that set the foundation. She, really, she almost asked him point blank – what about the people who, like, this doesn't happen overnight in one year? What about those? And instead he was like, no, I'm good. I'd like to thank yeah. absolutely nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank myself because I'm a genius and I made this all happen. Um, well, I'm telling you that Apple time, Apple time story, man. I wanted it to be true. We so all I've want it to be true. I wanted the story to be so true. If Kawhi were social media savvy guy who just wants to earn himself so much cred right now, his Instagram and Twitter would have a post of him with 12 sliced apples and the Larry, o- Larry OB next to him. It would be his finest achievement, his greatest achievement, besides obviously, you know, winning a title and being a finals MVP and all that stuff. But that would, be, that would be better. Yeah, that would, that would be better. And, well, you know, stopping of, two, three beats from happening and being the only person who's been an MVP in both, in both conferences and whatever, all that stuff. Even better would be if he had – an Apple Time post with the Larry OB and a bunch of sliced apples. We talked yeah, about the about Raptors. The endorsement opportunities too. Oh my God, absolutely! Hung, hungry for apples? <laughs> Who's? Yeah. I don't know, but we don't really see a lot of gonna Apple I'm gonna, ads. I'm we endorsed s- by apples. We have like California <laughs> avocados. Go go squeeze. You guys, you guys don't watch. Uh, go go squeeze. Yeah, of course watch. Billy goes to like some sort of liquid liquefied food or children's food. Yeah, how come by the way that how come avocados are like the only fruit slash vegetable that advertises itself? Oh, that's not true. That's not true. Name another just straight up vegetable that isn't like a fruit salad or canned or otherwise. It's just the thing. Florida oranges. Cotton. You don't Florida eat it, oranges. But the, okay, Florida cotton's oranges, not a vegetable yeah. or a fruit. So. But they, they, it's something like why? Why, the why touch, do I have the feel? So I can't go buy cotton. Of cotton. The fabric of pork. Our lives. The other pork, white meat. Not a vegetable or fruit. But still, like, why do they? It's not like there's a brand name that I can go out and buy. I mean, like you're really struggling. You're with really the struggling. Of this game. You acted like it was an absurd question, and now you have failed to give me a single answer. Florida oranges I, I was gave, right. Mike, cotton, Mike came pork. in strong. Those are not vegetables or fruits. Yeah. All right. If any, put it on the poll. Cars. Should other fruits and vegetables? <laughs> cars. Yeah, there's car commercials. Should, put it on the poll. Should other fruits and vegetables advertise themselves like California avocados? And giving us a cliche of tomato or tomato, he finally gets the game. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, what's the Warriors' plan? What do they do next? Oh, yeah, I have to do this thing. <laughs> this Father's Day, somehow I have to be Dan and Stu today. It's a lot. It's it's a lot. This Father's Day, give Dan, give Dad, <laughs> gift Dad. <laughs> now I really am Stu. <laughs> And now we're just going just Stu. I knew it was coming. At some point, I was going to turn into Stu. It's not even the chair. It's not even the chair. This Father's Day, gift Dad a TSO. TSO is the official watch of the NBA, and the TSO NBA collection offers different timepieces in all 30 teams. Plus, the newest edition, the TSO Chrono XL NBA Collector, is made with official Spalding Game Ball leather. Every TSO timepiece delivers quality performance and traditional luxury at an unbeatable price. Shop the TSO collection at us.tsoshop.com 
and at select watch and jewelry stores nationwide. Oh, yeah, people. I thought LeBron James, who's said as much, is chasing ghosts and chasing goats. That's weird. Right? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. So why would <laughs> someone who's doing that take a year off? Why would you chase ghosts? I'd run from ghosts. Yeah, right. Yep. You'd run from everything. I'd run from goats also. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Lebitard Show, plus our Miami Only Hour and our Best of Podcast On Demand in the ESPN app. And subscribe to the Lebitard and Friends Podcast Network featuring South Beach, uh, South Beach Sessions. It's not the chair. South Beach Sessions, Stupidity, and Mystery Crate. Also, that's what she said with Sarah Spain. Yeah. New episodes every week. Please rate and subscribe. Chelsea Handler coming up next week. Oh, that's a huge one. Yeah. New Mystery Crate is out now, by the way. Excellent. Check it out. It's all available in the More tab of the ESPN app. The ESPYs Sweepstake is your chance to win a trip to the ESPYs and play in the new Apex Legends Pro-Am event. Go to ebay.com slash ESPN to donate to the V Foundation for a chance to win. Rules at ebay.com slash ESPN. Uh, we have some very smart uh, listeners uh, that have uh, let me know that there are Georgia peaches. Those uh, cranberries ads, right? The uh, California raisins, Chiquita bananas, pomegranate. uh, pomegranates. Yep, those are. Yep. Yep. So there are more fruits and vegetables. I would say all fruits, right? Are, are any of those vegetables? Someone said Idaho, Idaho potatoes, but those are more of a tuber. I don't think it is technically a vegetable. No. Not sure. I, I or is it a root like vegetable? Is it a tuber also a vegetable, or is it? I feel so embarrassed. This is the first time I've ever heard <laughs> about a tuber. <laughs> yeah, well, because if you order something you, right? and it says like a, um, a like a melange of root vegetables, often potatoes are involved. But I don't know if that's just a. We're not big into veggies. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. All right, it's Sarah Spain, Amin El Hassan. Amin's face right now is so much disgust for God knows what. Really, could be anything. Uh, but. Maybe just the fact that he still suggested that cotton was a fruit or vegetable. Is that well, it? I was, I was just wondering, if, if potato is not a vegetable, how do we have potato salad? Uh, there's a lot of salads that are, I mean, tuna salad. But it has other things in it to make it a salad. Potato salad is just potatoes. No, salad meal, is more right? the way something is constructed and served than it is the materials that make it up. Mm. Yeah, so you, you can pasta make salad. A salad. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Sid Chicero joins us now from... Uh, Tim and Sid on uh, Sportsnet in Canada. Sid, I uh, I feel as though uh, a certain uh, former ESPNer whose name rhymes with Bip Scalus is trying to steal your thunder by just going to town on Kawhi in ways that we've only really heard you uh, when talking about international soccer players. Uh, would you like to defend Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors? Uh, absolutely. Well, I, I can't. I can't identify with Skip because when I go off on someone, I'm right. Ooh, good start. So I have no good start. And I think I think I, I'm so, I'm shocked you guys brought up Skip. You guys, I didn't. I brought so up funny. Bip Scalis. I don't know who you're talking about, the Skip <laughs> guy. I'm talking well, about well, Bip Scalis. Well played, sir. Yes, oh yes, you did do that. Um, look, I I gotta say, I have no interest on what the overpaid old Italian grandmother on Fox is saying. Zero interest. This euphoric feeling in this country, and I'm not going to call him number two. I'm going to call him Kawhi. You cannot beat this. This is one of the craziest Canadian sports stories of all. Well, be careful. I don't think we could say that. I'm not sure. There's different rules in Sorry. Canada. Oh, yeah. We're, Sorry, I forgot. Mike there's Ryan. I forgot Sorry, there's Mike different Ryan. rules in Canada, so we're good. You're you fine. Go back to You're the fine. potato discussion if you want. My apologies. <laughs> um, I, I, this is not the day I want to acknowledge any of that nonsense. This isn't it. This is one of the great moments in Canadian sports history. Basketball in this country is never going to be the same. Raptor Masai did this with not a lottery pick. Top pick he had was a top 15 pick. It was Kawhi. And I don't care what American pundit goes on what station 
or tries to get more clicks in this moment. I don't care. This is Canada's moment. This is our moment. We've been watching this team since 1994, and some troll who's 85 years old isn't going to kill this buzz. This is about the Raptors. It's about Masai. It's about the fact he's a god. And this is one of the great moments. So, yes, the, the unnamed person you are speaking of, we know of him, Sarah. We are very familiar with he who not speak the name of Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> but I, am, oh, I have man. no interest in dealing with this guy. And, I mean, I was right on Messi last summer. I'm right on him tonight when the Copa America starts. I'm on a roll, baby. I am on You're a roll. You're damn right, Sid. You damn right. They let him know about Messi, what a fraud he is, man. I'm sick and tired of these people bringing up Messi, saying, "Oh, he's the greatest of all time." How are you gonna call him the greatest of all time? He's not the greatest of all time. Are you kidding me? I'm reading articles about how the bar for Messi is now this tournament, right? Because we judge the great soccer players of all time on whether or not they can beat Venezuela. That's the <laughs> bar for the great soccer players of all time. But I digress. To me, this is a major. This is such a major moment. You guys are aware. But I can't express to you the excitement that the fan base has, how many new basketball fans have been created. This is, this is massive. And no Internet troll who's paid by Fox is going to kill any buzz. It's not humanly possible. Now, if Woj throws out another report of someone trying to pry Masai, that's a different story. Sid, you've already, of, you've, oh, you've already given us more than enough, trust me. Uh, but we're running out of time here. So quickly, before we let you go, I have to ask, is Kawhi sort of a made man there regardless of what happens next? Are the restaurants going to apply the Kawhi and Dine offer even if he leaves? It's a lifetime pass. Yeah. It's a lifetime pass, whether he's a Clipper, whether he's a Nick. It, 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 it's, it's irrelevant. He, he can do no wrong in this country. He's been such a great role model for a lot of young kids, just the way he carries himself. Uh, I didn't know much about him. I still think to a certain extent we don't know a lot about him. But what we've seen, I'm beyond impressed. I mean, he, if he leaves tomorrow, they'll still name streets after him, Sarah. I think, I think it's a lock. Absolutely. Thanks for, the, uh, thanks for everything, really, Sid. Thanks very much. Sid just Sarah You're joined the best, Sid. Uh, from uh, Tim and Sid on Sportsnet Canada. Thanks, Tim. Uh, we're going to stay in Canada next. We're going to get maybe a, a more level-headed. We're not sure yet. I'm gonna, uh, you know what? I'm going to ask Bruce Arthur about uh, Colin Coward. That Shoot. Oh, no. Estás escuchando el programa de Dan Levatar en ESP. Yeah, ready. Right, 
and tune into Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Would you say that that failure falls on you? Uh, let me get Bruce Arthur on a different number than I was supposed to call Bruce. I'm just messing with Arthur you because that was the song that's yeah, playing. No, it's, it it like falls a pun on me. I don't even stomach. know which microphone. Falls it falls on me. That was the pun that I was with the. Oh, yeah. And there we are. <laughs> Sarah Spain, Amin Al Hassan. As I said earlier, holding this ship down. Holding it mean, down. What is Amin laughing at? You've been some help today. <laughs> yeah, Amin's been bringing a lot to this this whole interaction here. Uh, let's Pork let's give cotton. you an opportunity here. The Warriors, what's their plan right now? Do they offer max deals to the guys that just got hurt and are going to be out? Do they have to consider the fact that they don't have space to carry a bunch of guys that won't be available to February, March, and later? Yeah, I mean, if you don't pay them, what's your alternative? It's not like you get that money to go spend on someone else. They're so hopelessly over the cap. You have to you have to pay them. And especially, when, again, with Clay Thompson's injury, again, it's, it's always minor when it's someone else's right. knee, but – the ACL is not what it used to be. We still talk about the ACL like it's 1985. And ACL surgeries now are, are, are guys that come back in six to nine months, and for the most part, they're just as good, if yeah, not Derek better. Yeah, Derrick Rose than is a great example of that. That turned out great. What's that? <laughs> Derrick Rose, great example. <laughs> no, but Derrick Derek Rose, it wasn't just an ACL. It was, it was uh, problems in both knees that uh, ended up happening yes. for him. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, for the most part, you look at guys, yeah. they tear the ACL, they come back, they're fine. All right, well, we'll talk about this and the Warriors' plan, but we found Bruce Arthur of the Toronto Star, and uh, we just had Sid Shashera, I can't say that name, um, and we got a sort of uh, enraged view of how Canada's feeling today. Bruce, I'm expecting maybe a slightly more level-headed approach. Uh, Can you tell us what it's like, uh, uh, you know, for this finally to occur and and for the Raptors to be kings in the NBA? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Neil. Uh, It's it's interesting because, I mean, I – this is not a country that's used to this in any way. Like, the last major, major championship, the last thing that could be said to be national are kind of two different things. The Blue Jays won in 93, and our Canadian men's hockey team and women's hockey team and our Olympic teams do stuff every four years or so. But this, this was different. I'll put it this way. The first TV broadcast in 2013, so at the very beginning of this run, The first year they make the playoffs, they lose to Brooklyn in seven games. The first broadcast of that year was 54,000 people watched it on TV in a nation of about 35 million. Game five was watched by 6.4 million people. And after last night, I don't know what the numbers were for last night's game. After last night, there were people up and down Young Street. And the report was from the lake to Steeles. And that's the entire city. Hmm. That's this, this, this is the longest street in the world. It keeps going way up into the woods, basically. But that is the entire length of the city of Toronto as it is defined by its founders. Um, this is uh, this is a mania unlike probably anything I've seen in Canada in my career, and we're coming up on 20 years now, other than uh, Canada winning the gold medal in Vancouver in 2010 in men's hockey because it was a home Olympics and half the country watched on TV. But almost nothing has pulled people together like this cheering for one thing i don't think anything has outside of the olympics in canada in the time that i've been working it's it's really an astonishing thing for a sport that in canada is not the number one sport and up until this year probably wasn't even the number two sport bruce as far as the raptors and their success not only this year but over recent uh years versus the maple leafs and the the ineptitude there how far away (laughs) is toronto Become, from becoming a basketball town. <clears throat> now, here's the thing. The Leafs could be good. The team the Leafs lost to was the Bruins. They go to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final. The Leafs are in a great place, tons of young talent. They could be really good. But the, what's interesting about hockey versus basketball in Toronto is demographically they're different things. And the Leafs are, are bigger. They're absolutely bigger. If the Leafs had done what the Raptors just did, half the country might have watched to watch that game because it's just – 40% of the population lives in Ontario in, in, in Canada, and another probably 10% left Ontario. There's a ton of Leafs fans in Canada. The hockey is still king. Hockey is still wended not only to our institutions, not only to our advertisements, but in a fundamental way to what it means to be Canadian. Like, there are the things that make us Canadian. Hockey is one of the things that's used to sell everything from beer to, I don't know, your house, like everything. Like, that's, that's, an, that's an almost universal thing. 
But in basketball, what's happened in basketball is it's become an, a really easy and, like it is globally, inexpensive entry for new Canadians, for the more demographically changing Toronto. And I remember talking to a Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment executive in 2002. They were opening a court with Vince Carter. And he said that they were looking at the numbers and wondering when the Raptors would pass the Leafs because they thought it would happen. Because if you look at the composition of the city, 50% of the city wasn't born in the city, and they didn't have the Leafs pass from your grandfather to your father to you or from your grandmother to your mother to you. And so it's not impossible that it happens one day or at least that they get closer to co-tenant status. But Leafs just still have an unbelievable built-in advantage. But this was... This was a basketball moment. I grew up loving basketball, right? I loved, I loved hockey, too. I was a Canucks fan. I grew up loving basketball in Canada. I never thought I'd see this. Never in my life. Five years ago, if you told me that this was going to happen, I wouldn't have believed you then, that the country could unite to this level behind a basketball team. I know people love winning, but this is not our sport, man. As much as well, a Canadian invented it in the first to place. The, to, yeah. to, you know, for all of America crying over here, it is now. Hey, Bruce, before we let you go, and we're talking to Bruce Arthur of the Toronto Star. You know, when, when you joined me on Spain and Company last week, or maybe even longer ago than that, you talked about sort of mm-hmm. the, the the distance between Toronto and the rest of Canada. They view it as different and cosmopolitan. And does this bring mm-hmm. them closer together because they're all united in excitement? Or is it further accentuate that Toronto is the place where this thing happened and that they're above and different from the rest of Canada? Well, my guess is that the ratings on that last game are going to go over 7 million. And you don't get that just by Toronto. You don't. It's just, it, this is going to, the Blue Jays are one thing that all of Canada can agree on, even when as all of Canada doesn't like Toronto in every other way. Um, and I think the Raptors became that with this championship. I think they now cross into the bloodstream. And, I mean, we'll see if Kawhi stays or he goes. We have no idea. Um, but in terms of what the Raptors are in this country, they're bigger now. Basketball's bigger now. And it's going to have ramifications going forward that's going to spin forward 20 years. Yeah, be interesting to see if there's another Canadian team or if there's just a, a big difference in the way that, that sport uh, manifests itself across North America. Thanks for the insight, Bruce. Appreciate it. You bet, guys. Bruce Arthur of the Toronto Star. Two questions that will predict the perfect Father's Day gift. First question, is Dad a gadget guy? Second question, does Dad worry about home security? Yes? Then Blink security cameras are a Dad's Day no-brainer. Blink motion activated cameras are wire-free, set up in minutes, and run on two lithium batteries that last up to two years. And Blink indoor cameras and systems are 20% off through Father's Day. Go to BlinkProtect.com slash Dan. That's BlinkProtect.com slash Dan. Blink cameras are also available on Amazon and at Best Buy. Voy a reír, voy a bailar, on the Dan Levata. To uh, update us on the polls from today, I don't think we had that many. The Twitter poll at Levitar Show is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club delivers the products you use to look, feel, and smell your best right to your door. Plus, with their handsome discount, the more you buy, the more you save. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Dan for special offer, for a special offer. All right. Guy who says Larry OB, jerk or no jerk? 68% of the audience said jerk. Mm -hmm. Would you rather stay at the Taco Bell Hotel or immerse yourself in Krispy Kreme's glazed waterfall? Never happened before. What? 56% of the audience said Taco Bell Hotel. (laughs) I think that happened. What about the other? Mm. 44% said glazed waterfall. If Zadino Chara having before. hooks on his bed is, is Zadino Chara having hooks Zidano. on his bed terrifying. It's a record? What's the record? Well, I think it's 98. I think it was 100%. We said it last week. 92% of the audience said yes. Should other fruits and vegetables advertise themselves like California avocados? 82% of the audience said yes. Those Turns out the they polls. do, yeah. apparently. It's cranberries and Pork. oranges and cotton. cotton. Yeah. Um, I have discovered something magical about Amin while staring at his face on the screen for three hours. Do you know that your ears do a dance? Yeah, I I can wiggle my ears. But like when you're thinking hard and not paying attention, they just like toggle back and forth. No. Yeah, you just did it multiple times. Yeah, because I was bored. Let me see it. Do it again. (laughs) (laughs) That's great radio. I forgot we're on the radio. Yeah. 
Somebody yeah, record do that. Do it, do it while you're giving takes. Somebody record oh, that yeah. and then send it to me, and I'll put it on on the Twitter feed. That's magical. Uh, we were talking about the on. Warriors. I want to get your expert opinion as someone who was formerly in you know front office of a team and as our ESPN front office insider. Uh, what do the Warriors do next? What do you predict happens in terms of Clay and Durant and contracts, and then how they fill in the spaces while those guys are injured? I think Clay gets paid. Uh, I think Durant gets offered but probably leaves. I think Sean Livingston is going to retire. Um, and then beyond that, they're going to have to, you know, one of the funny things I've said uh, since before the, uh, the Durant injury, when everyone assumed that Durant was going to leave, is this team's going to be great no matter what with those three guys, Draymond, uh, Steph, and Clay. The parts they're going to have to replace are Iguodala, Livingston. Those were the guys, you know, David West obviously retired last year. Those were the guys that gave them problem, uh, gave them great uh, impact minutes throughout the season and throughout playoffs. And as they're getting older, the guys coming up beneath them, the Jordan Bells, the Quinn Cooks, they're just not as good as those players. So they're going to need to replace those guys. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. They're going to be armed basically only with that, uh, that taxpayer mid-level exception um, because DeMarcus Cousins probably won't be back either. Yeah, so you've got a, a, a completely different-looking Warriors team. Do you still consider them one that can be – I mean, we, we, we're all guessing because we don't know what the makeup of the NBA is going to be going forward, but you consider them still a team that will be one of the best in the West. Assuming that uh, Clay Thompson returns somewhere around All-Star break or March or something like that, I think going into the playoffs, yeah, they're going to they're gonna be awesome. They'll be awesome, but it won't be what it's been – what we've had the last five years, Sarah, that's gone. Right. Like they'll be the favorite, but it's not the prohibitive favorite anymore. And it's it's they're vulnerable. They aren't what they once were, but they're still really good. You know, it's interesting because some of the biggest markets in the NBA haven't had success lately. LeBron, obviously, getting to the Lakers might help them end that streak. But like places like Chicago haven't been able to draw big names. The Knicks haven't been able to. So when it used to be, you know, difficult to imagine smaller places drawing people. I, I just don't know if the if Golden State in that new stadium and everything else is going to be somewhere that people flock to once this iteration of the team is over. How do we even know anymore? Is it just about who drafts well, I wonder? That, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the moral of the story is you have to be a well-managed team, right? I think if you're a well-managed organization, that's way more attractive to a player than being in a certain city. Um, and now there are exceptions, obviously, along the way. Uh, but, you know, LeBron, if LeBron is kind of like, a case study you talked about earlier is Kawhi Leonard going to be an example for all the other free agents. Is LeBron going to be an example? So yeah. You, you say, oh, the Lakers are great. Don't worry. It doesn't matter. They're in L.A. They're the Lakers. And you see how they can take LeBron James and even ruin him, even ruin his his uh, season. It's so Friday. I, I think that that's going to factor in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of questions as the NBA is going to change a ton this offseason. It's Friday, which means we got to go to the club. Uh, I don't have a read. Do you have a read? The Capital Are you asking one? me? The Capital One? I just read the Capital uh, One. Yeah, I think we're good. The club's brought to you by wallet? someone. Uh, Capital One, yeah. Reimagining, we, we did that one. I think we're good. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to the club. I want my chips with the dip. That's all I know. I don't want my chips playing. I want my chips with the dip. Yeah, that's Drake. Uh, it's probably going to be also the first single on his new completely inspired by the Raptors album because this time he doesn't need a ghostwriter. I'm writing it myself. Chips and dip. Who else is in the club? Oh, yeah, that's uh, I'm supposed to be leading this? Okay. Oh, who else is in the club? <laughs> Still the most memorable thing Kawhi has ever said. Trying to get that Larry OB over there. <laughs> Other than that, jerk. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kawhi. You're a great basketball player. That's a jerk move. Who else? I'd just assume fight and walk. So you just do your thing. I'll do mine. Okay, Madison Bumgarner. Thanks for that. Nick who else? Nurse is an idiot. Who else is in the club? Nick Nurse is an idiot. Stan Van Gundy, I can't believe that. I mean, he, hope I you enjoyed the Dan Levatar show on ESPN Radio. World Star.